demystifying the Vedas for environmental conservation and protection. Well, before I move ahead and talk you through the enlightening message of the Vedas, I would like to start by asking you all a question. What, according to you, is the biggest challenge which is confronting the mankind today? Well, some people have said violence might be equated to terrorism. Well, poverty, another thing. Well, illiteracy, health issues, and there are many other issues. For example, peace, conflict, and gender discrimination as well. Well, but the gravest challenge, which directly raises questions on our own survival and existence, is the present-day environmental catastrophe. The reasons, the reasons for this environmental crisis are many. Well, pollution, deforestation, massive industrialization, urbanization, changes in the land use pattern, and many more. But there is something which is common in all these factors which have contributed to this present-day environmental crisis. Any guesses which is the common factor in all these reasons of environmental crisis? Exactly. All these activities are anthropogenic, and these activities are created by we, the humans, and we shall not be part of these things as well. So we are degrading, we are destroying the nature, and we are continuously involved in doing all these things. But why we are doing this? Well, if I was to answer this question, I would say that the world today is suffering from something which I term as the two cultures in Rome. And I can see many faces in the audience wondering what this two cultures in Rome is all about. Well, this two cultures in Rome, ladies and gentlemen, refers to two different sets of ideas, two different sets of beliefs, two different sets of opinions which shape the social behavior. And that has contributed to environmental crisis because there is a group of people who basically want faster economic development. That faster economic development has been guided by materialism, luxurious lifestyle patterns, and many other things which have been involved in the profit-earning motives. Whereas, there is another group of people who want to protect and conserve the environment, but the unfortunate truth today is that the first group is in majority, while the second group is in minority. And this is why we have the present-day environmental catastrophe in front of us. And how? The Vedas are going to help us. Something which was composed thousands of years ago. Something which has been categorized as the source of human knowledge. The earliest books in the libraries of mankind. Can they help us? Yes, the Vedas can help us to make a smooth transition from the so-called two cultures in Rome into monoculture. And that monoculture has to be of protection of environment, monoculture of conservation of nature, monoculture of increasing the sustainability of environment. And this is where the Vedas can help. Well, the word Veda has derived its existence from a Sanskrit word, with, which basically means to know. And according to Dharma Shastra, an ancient Hindu text, these are the source of all knowledge, ladies and gentlemen. Well, this is the shloka which has been mentioned in Yajurveda in his 36th chapter, shloka number 17 says, Om Dhau Antriksham Shanti Pratvim Shanti Rapaha Shanti Shanti Roshade Shanti Vanaspatiya Shanti Vishvedeva Shanti Brahma Shanti Sarva Shanti Shanti Rev Sa Ma Shanti Redhi Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. And this means, may peace be in the sky, may peace be in the midair, may peace be on the earth, may peace be in the waters, 
May peace be in the forest. May peace be in peace. May peace be in the Brahman. Peace be in all the creatures, ladies and gentlemen. Now, are we living in peace with nature? Are we living in peace with nature? I think we aren't. We are continuously involved in degrading the nature, exploiting the environment. And how can we establish a healthy and a cordial relationship with nature? If we are not going to establish a healthy and a cordial relationship with nature, the natural disasters and everything is in front of us. To us, for us to establish a healthy alliance a cordial relationship with nature, the Vedas have also shown us the way here also. This shloka, which has been mentioned in Isha Upanishad, which is the first shloka of Isha Upanishad, Shulk Yajur Ved, it says, Isha Vasyam Idam Sarvam Yat Kinchit Jagatyam Jagat Ten Takten Bhunjita Ma Kaswidhanam Which basically means that universe is the creation of that supreme power meant for the benefits of all all living beings and even those who are yet to be born and let no species encroach upon the rights of the other just imagine the deep message which the shloka has given to us take what has been required please do not be involved in any kind of violence with nature Please live a life in contentment and then only you will establish a healthy and a cordial alliance with nature and live in peace with nature. Well, moving ahead, in Atharva Veda, we have a Bhumi Sukta, which has nearly 64 shlokas being dedicated to Earth. Earth is being depicted as the symbol of our survival and existence, as a foundation of our survival and existence. This shloka which has been mentioned in the 12th book of Atharva Veda, shloka number 1.1 says, Satyam brahat mugram diksha tapo brahma yagya pratvim dharyanti sana bhutasya bhavasya panturyum lokam pratvim nakurnutu which basically means satya, which is the truth. Rata which is the vast cosmic divine order. Everything is manifested inside the earth. By its selfless dedication, and she was our constant companion, she is our constant companion. Let she expand her beauty and vastness and provide us a healthy life. Well, think of something which is selflessly associated with us. Think of something which has been mentioned in the Rig Veda as our mother. And then think, can we even think of exploiting, degrading the earth? Something which is our constant companion. Mother Earth was with our ancestors and she will be with our future generations, ladies and gentlemen. Can we still think of degrading it, polluting it, destructing it? No, we can't. And this is where the Vedas have shown us the way how to transition thinking in your mind from this two cultures in Rome into the monoculture. Moving ahead, recently, well, many people will be aware that the lungs of the earth were bleeding. The Amazon rainforests, they were bleeding, they were degraded thousands of square kilometers of area. And many researchers have said that the reason for this forest fire was that that people were involved in constant deforestation. Now imagine something which has been written thousands of years ago gave us a very clear advice that please do not be involved in any kind of deforestation or degradation. And this is the advice mentioned in the Rig Veda 8th book, shloka number 1.13. Vanani par jahitan drivo, which means that forest or the one shall never be destroyed, shall never be cut. And what we are doing today, we are recklessly being involved in deforestation. We are cutting down the trees for our living spaces, Lebensurum, for urbanization, for our agricultural practices, 
and many other activities. And other interesting advice has been found in an ancient Hindu text, Matsu Purana. Shloka number 154, 312 says, Dash Koopa Samo Vapi, Dash Vapi Samo Hridah, Dash Hridah Samo Putro, Dash Putra Samo Druma, which basically means that 10 pounds are equal to one reservoir. 10 pounds are equal to one reservoir. A sun is equal to 10 reservoirs and a tree is equal to 10 suns. Well, a tree is equal to 10 of your children. It not only contributes by the oxygen it gives, but it also enriches the life form by providing essential nutrients to the soil. It is also important to know that your son or your daughter will pass on only from one lineage to the other, ladies and gentlemen, but it is only and only the trees who will be there for your future generation. Well, there's another interesting advice, another interesting ethical advice which has been found in the 10th book of Rig Veda, Shloka number 9.8, which is related with clean and unpolluted water. Idam apaha pravrahat which basically means that water, which is pure and uncontaminated, please wash away whatever sins I have done. Please wash away the wicked tendencies inside me. Water, which is unpolluted and pure, is not only essential, for our external cleanliness, ladies and gentlemen, it is also important for our internal cleanliness. For detoxification of body, mind and soul, clean water is very essential. Well, water has been said to be disease destroyer and disease conquering in Atharva Veda, third book, shloka number 12.9. Something in the ancient times which was disease destroyer. And what we have done today. Disease destroyer has now become the biggest disease giver because unpolluted and contaminated water is the biggest source of the diseases on this earth. Therefore, it's important for each and every individual to understand the value of clean and unpolluted water and not polluted even unknowingly. Well, with respect to air, the importance and an advice has been given in Yajur Veda, fifth book, shloka number 43, and it says, Daya ma lekhi antriksham mahasi. Please do not destroy anything of the sky. Please do not degrade the quality of the air. And they have also given us the reason why not to degrade the quality of the air. Well, vata vatu bej jashumbho mayo bhanur hride Parna Yun Shintarisht, which is mentioned in the 10th book of Rig Veda, shloka number 186.1, which says that clean vayu, clean air, which is pure, it is very important for our health, it is a source of our well-being, it is a source of our longevity. And therefore, we should not pollute the air, we should understand the enlightening and the illustrious message which the Vedas have given to us. We shall not be involved in any kind of destruction of nature, exploitation of nature, and any kind of any activities which are being associated with degradation of nature and environment. Well, to conclude, I would say that Vedas have definitely shown us the way, and it has told us a harsh reality which we need to accept that no individual life form on this earth can remain separated or alienated from nature. We are a part of this interwoven system. We cannot remain in alienation with nature. Therefore, by polluting and degrading the environment, we are injuring ourselves. And by healing it, by preserving it, we can cure ourselves, ladies and gentlemen. Well, in the end, I would like to pray that Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha, Sarve Santu Niramaya, 
सर्वे भद्राणि पश्यन्तु माँ कश्चित दुख भाग भवेत ओम शांति 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 विच इज बेसिकली टेकन फ्रॉम रिधंका उपनिषदा श्लोका नंबर 1.4.14 ऑफ शुल्क यजुर्वेद विच मीन्स दैट मे ऑल बी हैप्पी मे ऑल बी फ्री ऑफ डिसीजेस मे देर बी नो सोरो एंड सफरिंग्स ऑन दिस वर्ल्ड मे पीपल मूव फ्रॉम डार्कनेस टूवर्ड्स लाइट एंड टू मूव from darkness towards the light we need to basically take back home the message which the vedas have given in terms of environmental protection and conservation